So if I he's, <coughs> he's loading the file, I'd like to introduce, he is uh, he's graduated from uh, Chris Department, uh, National Taiwan University, and now he is a PhD candidate in uh, at Department of Physics, uh, MIT. So, So as you can see the topic is from topological order to uh, a lattice non perturbative definition of chiral fermion gauge theory. Uh, let's welcome uh, Hong Jun as the speaker. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? So uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Actually, I was not prepared to give a talk. I'm, I'm not prepared to give a talk here. Uh, earlier this week, uh, uh, on Monday, actually, there's a, a particle physics journal club, and they invite me to give a talk on this topic. So you can see the topic is actually kind of uh, connected to what the, the summer school hears about the topological insulator, but it's also connected to something kind of uh, unfamiliar to most of people might be here, because it's a gate theory. So people study high energy of uh, particle physics. And I'm trying to connect these two topics together. Okay, um, the, and you might know there's another workshop other than the one here. There's a one about this non perturbative uh, uh, gauge theory, uh, or phase structure of a gauge theory uh, upstairs in the eighth floor. But uh, somehow this uh, workshop together kind of uh, have some topics overlap with what I'm going to talk about. So you should kind of uh, get excited about what I'm going to, going to, going to say. And I should mention one, one thing first uh, that the uh, uh, most of my work is actually done with uh, Professor Xiao Gangwen. And you might know uh, Alexi, Alex, Alexi Kitea. How do you pronounce it? Kitea. Uh, he is a professor at Caltech, and then just uh, Professor here mentioned. But maybe not all of you know uh, Professor Xiao Gangwen, but except most people come from Beijing. Uh, so I just want to say that uh, uh, Xiao Gang is also a very uh, creative and uh, a dynamic person trying to drive the direction of our topological phase. And that's really a far reaching thing. Maybe uh, uh, really far beyond what people are doing about topological insulator. So what I'm trying to talk about today is really a kind of a high, maybe high technology of a bit even not uh, achieved by technology. It's more theoretical, so I need to apologize for that. Okay. So let me go on, and please uh, drop, please uh, just start me to ask question anytime, please. Okay. Again, so it's my title. So let me just give us some kind of inspiration. That as a physicist, we want to understand the, the wonders of the universe. And maybe just from the very uh, beginning that we study like uh, uh, simple Newtonian mechanics, but uh, we are going to uh, explore the small scale physics like uh, particle physics. And you know there's uh, atoms, and then atoms inside there's a uh, nuclear ones, nucleus, and then there's a uh, uh, quarks and gluons, and then People, uh, uh, my study string theory in order to understand everything. But there's also not just a small scale uh, physics, there's a large scale physics about universe, there's a large scale things about gravity. And there's a beautiful uh, picture, a beautiful uh, part of the universe and the uh, natural world. And uh, we have lost uh, mythology trying to understand these things. But the thing is, uh, what's the, what are the origins of these things? And uh, we can ask, we can ask this question, okay? So I, I, I'll try to uh, give talk. Uh, I'll, I'll try to say something back to this slide, but uh, it's very end, so you need to wait in order to know the answer. So the talk is based on a series of paper with uh, Professor Xiao Gang Wen. Uh, so it's a non perturbative definition about chiral theory, and I will say about this a bit more. And then the first part is uh, chiral matter theory, which is a simpler, and then I'll talk about chiral gauge theory, and I'll talk about the relation between the <coughs> SPT order. Uh, anyone heard about SPD order? Please raise your hand. Let me just make sure how much people know, so I can try to uh, gauge how what's the things I can I can tell. SPT. 
heard about this, please raise your hand, don't be shy. So, okay, then I'll explain SPT. SPT is just a, a, a type of orders that uh, contain a part of our topological insulator. So topological insulator is a subset, and maybe some of you heard about Hodan spin chain. That's also a subset of a, a topolog uh, SPT order, symmetry protective topological order. Google this name is quite famous. And uh, there's a, another relation related to particle physics called gauge anomaly. I'll talk about anomaly as well. And uh, some works about the uh, ground state degeneracy. As you talk, of, you know the topology dependence of uh, ground state degeneracy. I'll talk about this. And work are done with uh, uh, a group of people at the Brown Institute and the MIT. So let me just uh, give a kind of structure and a framework about what we are, we are here right now uh, in a theoretical frontier. Uh, we now understand that uh, there is a trivial phase, like a trivial insulator, so not conducting in the bulk. But there is a case that uh, there is a so-called uh, people kind of misnomer say topological for lots of things have uh, non-trivial edge states. But actually, it's not exactly true. There's actually two class. One is called symmetry protective trivial uh, order or symmetry protective topological order, in the sense that it's not really topological, like topological insulator. It's not really topological. <coughs> Why? Because what we mean by top topological means that if you put a sample, suppose by some kind of experiment, that you put a sample on, on uh, some kind of uh, periodic boundary conditions like a torus, then the ground state degeneracy will depend on the topology. But topological insulator does not have this property, so this is really a misnomer. And I hope um, many of you might already know this, but I just emphasize. So topological insulator is not really topological. But since people say uh, topological insulator, so uh, the name might be symmetry protective topological order, but it's not really topological. So let me just give a, a, a two examples first. It's time reversal invariant topological insulator, either in 2D or 3D, uh, with a certain symmetry like U1 charge and Z2 time reversal and some uh, fermion parity symmetry. Give a Z2 class, as you know. And there's a Hodan spin chain in 1980-something, basically, with SO3 symmetry. And with some kind of a more complicated mathematics called group cohomology actually tells you that it's a Z2 class, they are two. So it's all determined in mass. Okay. And the proposal of group cohomology, I guess, uh, first is by uh, uh, Xiaogang Wen, uh, professor at MIT, and also now at the Promet Institute, uh, published in Science uh, in 2012, and also a long paper, which is more mathematical if you have interest, uh, look at this one. And, uh, and there's another class is driven even longer, which is intrinsic topological order, like fractional quantum whole states. So as I say, the fractional quantum whole states really have a non-trivial topological dependence on the uh, spatial manifold. And uh, the term that you basically turn about this is the uh, co theory. The classification is given by the label, the, the coupling in front of the chen theory. And uh, if you have interest, I can write it down. Basically, just uh, uh, this kind of term. So this K is just the label, so-called class, uh, the, this, uh, the, the class of the transaction theory, okay? And it exactly gives the quantized uh, whole conductance for this, uh, for this uh, transaction, uh, from, from the coupling of the transaction theory. And let me just give some kind of a meaning of what SPD really means is that it's a short-range entangled state. So people nowadays study about entanglement spectrum. It's short-range entangled. And I can explain further about short-range entangled, but it's uh, kind of a, uh, Tedious. So let me wait till any if someone asks, maybe I'll, I'll come up with this. And there's no topological entanglement entropy. There's no fractionalized charge, like an anions. In a strong coupling sense, there's a fractionalized charge. And there's no fractional statistics. People study anions. When you try to break anions to do topological quantum computation, those fractional statistics is not appear, does not appear in SPT, symmetry protected or symmetry protected trivial or symmetry protected topological order. As I say, there are two classes. In uh, the uh, topological insulator and the uh, whole thing spin chain. And the thing is that uh, you can mathematically formalize this, uh, formulate this uh, 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 symmetry by some so called the onside symmetry. Any SPD order in the bulk, in this uh, bulk, must has its onside symmetry. And the boundary in this non trivial part, most people know as a gap is edge states, but it's not always the case. If you break the symmetry, you have a de degenerate ground states, just like the things you learned about this. Uh, uh, this uh, Next, you can have potential, and maybe there's uh, multiple potential. You can have uh, degenerate ground states on uh, each, uh, basically, each uh, minimum of the potential. So that's uh, the reason there's a degeneracy of a ground state. And of course, you know the ground state degeneracy from this uh, Kramer's uh, uh, doubly. This is also a degeneracy. But this is a case that if there's uh, 
uh, symmetry breaking such that uh, the potential has a mul uh, multiple sector, then you have a ground state degeneracy. So the lowest point for that case will have a, for example, threefold degeneracy. And ground state degeneracy might also come from the boundary topological order, and this is more exotic. Uh, so that, let's just keep this in mind. Uh, I just give you some kind of a general framework. And there's also intrinsic topological orders, long range entangled states. And there's also, usually it's a topological entanglement entropy. And there's a uh, fractionalized charge, like anion. There's a fractionalized excitation. The electron charge may not be one, can be one third, like fractionalized, uh, one third left in states, a fractional statistics. So this is like a dictionary. And ground state degeneracy, as I just tried to illuminate later, so depends on the non-trivial topology. So that's the reason we, why, why we call this topo topo topological. And it's not the case for SPD, as I emphasized several times. And there's even more mathematical definition. It's non abelian very phase on the uh, coupling uh, constant moduli space. And I won't have time to explain that, but I just uh, keep these two as a definition of topological order. So let's just, uh, uh, just the wrap up about the SPT, basically short range entangle, no topological entanglement entropy, and no top fractionalized charge, no fractional statistics, bulk realized unsized symmetry, boundary realized non unsized symmetry, gap this H space, and ground state degeneracy only come from symmetry breaking, not, not due to the topological dependent on space, okay? And the intrinsic topological order is long range entangle, and a topological, with topological entanglement entropy with a fractionalized charge, fractional statistics. Those people study a uh, post paper on this uh, strong correlated uh, electron loads are uh, highly motivated by this fractionalized statistics and fractionalized charge. So any questions so far, please. Okay. <coughs> and there is a two definition about this topological order just uh, depend on topological space and very phase, not very not phase. So this is a picture you like. So uh, this is a sphere. And this is a uh, uh, genus one torus or just donor, and a genus three, uh, uh, genus three whatever torus, and then and then this is uh, so called the topological degeneracy means that if we put a sample <coughs> on this kind of manifold, then the ground state degeneracy will depend on this manifold. And I will tell you the story. For example, uh, if I have a feeding fraction uh, one third left in states, that theory will become has this uh, transcendent zero description with k equal to three, the ground state degeneracy on the first sphere was a uh, unique ground state degeneracy one. And the, this genus one torus, just like a donut, will have a ground state degeneracy three. And this one will have a three to the power q. So it's a three, three cube, it's a 27. So I, I'm just saying that uh, this is example really have a non-trivial ground state degeneracy of fractional quantum host states. K equal to three, and the ground state degeneracy for each case. I just uh, show him as a uh, GSB equal to one, three, and three to the power of three for each case. Okay, but this does not happen in topological insulation. There is no anions to have this uh, degeneracy, and the degeneracy is related to the fractionalized charge. And uh, we have a recent paper to discuss even more uh, exact concept of boundary degeneracy, the manifest of boundary. It's, it seems to be too mathematical, but actually, uh, Alexei Kitek, those people, they are studying quantum computation, really realize this kind of degeneracy on the latest, where you care about an experiment, you really can use some kind of defects to cause this to get boundary uh, with a you know, manifold with boundary. Just, just a, dr a drill hole with the defects, you can really have this kind of quality. And I just uh, mentioned, what I just uh, uh, described is that this degeneracy depends on the coefficient in from this uh, uh, transcendent theory, and the ground state degeneracy in general depends on this uh, coupling constant to the uh, number of the genus. If this is a genus G, like this one's G equal to three, then it's K to the power of three. And this is known uh, along the day like a weekend when you write this uh, 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 transcendent theory paper, then uh, people in condensed matter follow up in two or Two, two years later, understand this property really tell us something new about this uh, order of the states, okay? And uh, I won't go to the detail, but uh, I'll mention later about this age theory, which we want to study about topological insulation. For example, this also has some age theory for the transcendent theory, and which basically just has some uh, phi field, it's a boson field, the, the one you're familiar with, okay? And uh, with some uh, Derivative like one one derivative time, uh, first derivative was time and the first derivative was uh, spatial and 
then double derivative with this uh, spatial, with like a potential term. But this is a form that uh, I will mention a bit more, but I won't go to too many details, just that, that you know there's a boundaries uh, edge states. Okay, so this will be my online. I'll talk about motivation and question, try to connect something really exotic. So you kind of open your mind to this is something that uh, not the usual, usual, usual condensed matter physicists will talk about. So relate this question to some kind of uh, particle physics question. And I'll talk about some relation between uh, anomaly and quantum hole physics. Anomaly is a phenomenon I will mention uh, in more later. And I'll talk about uh, a latest definition for this anomaly free gauge theory. And I'll talk about some relation in general, how this concept in condensed matter really related to the basic fundamental law of the universe, okay, about anomaly. So what you are studying in, in a theory or in a lab actually has a far reaching connection to the more exotic things. So I guess uh, most of you are familiar with, this is a uh, motivation is that, uh, so in 1957 or 1956, uh, 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 Li Zhengdao, Li and uh, Xian Yang, and also uh, 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 Wu Jianxiong, basically they have a, a really a profound uh, contribution to understand the universe by question that whether the uh, parity or mirror symmetry will obey in our universe. It turns out that uh, they propose an experiment that they can uh, and show that whether it's true or no, and uh, put by, uh, it's shown by uh, 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 C.S. Wu that uh, actually it's wrong. So it's really a big mystery there that uh, mirror symmetry is not a symmetry of uh, uh, all particle physics and so-called parity violation. And we know this parity violation in our uh, elementary particle standard model for a long time, and basically contains so-called chiral. So chiral is like left and right. This chiral, chirality is different, chiral fermion and chiral gauge theory in the weak interaction. And we have a productive uh, theory definition for this, okay? And the, the, the theory is like uh, some kind of Lagrangian that you learn from field theory. Basically, the feature is that there is a projection operator project left and right differently. For that reason, if you do a parity, like a mirror symmetry transformation, then the Lagrangian will change, not invariant. And you can do a charge, make a particle become anti-particle, so to change the Lagrangian but if you make CP transformation, it almost go back to the original Lagrangian, okay? Up to the case if the coupling constant is real complex. But this is the structure known in particle physics. And I just wanna give you a, a kind of a sense that uh, there is a definition, um, a perturbative, that I can study from a low energy, long wavelength de description of this theory. And I can understand the universe pretty well about the weak sector, SU2, uh, this uh, weak interaction pretty well. Okay, so we have known this, that the standard model has this SU2 weak, and we have a perturbative definition for this theory, right on the Lagrangian. But for a long time, we don't have any understanding on how to non perturbative define this theory, even on the latest, for the non-abelian chiral fermion gauge fields, which is a SU2 standard model part of the theory. And which means that uh, we don't have a Hamiltonian quantum mechanical description for that theory. So let me just uh, illuminate me that uh, the theory that we understand as low energy is low wavelengths as a continuous theory, but in order to do non perturbative means that I need to define the theory even for any kind of arbitrary large constant. So <laughs> if I take the constant above this G to be arbitrary large, then I still need to define that theory. But that, there, will, there won't be a case that uh, if I want to do the calculation from Feynman diagram, I have a higher order term. Order by order, the coupling constant is larger than the higher order term cannot be uh, ignored. So there will be a problem. So the thing is that the people have a technology just like what you did in condensed matter. We put the, the breed on a space time and we define the theory on latest. So up to the latest scale, everything is well defined. From the very long wavelengths to the very short left, uh, wavelengths of this uh, latest, basically this theory is well defined. But the problem is even more significant in the sense we don't have definition even put on latest for non abelian chiral theory. So this is a statement, okay? This is really a, a strange thing. Why can we define this on latest? So th this talk, I will talk about this, uh, how to define this chiral fermion gauge theory. From what you learn from topological insulator, topological order, that there is a concept how to do this. Okay, so we can define this as a, a finite Hilbert space and a Hamiltonian quantum theory. So any questions so far? Please. <coughs> Oh, 
So what I mean is that, uh, yes, so, so what do you do when you get a Hamiltonian? You can find every physical property uh, in principle, like a diagonalized Hamiltonian. You can find out the energy, uh, energy spectrum, the eigen energy. You can solve the energy eigenstates. You can calculate the quantity you want. But the thing is here, you cannot even put the Lagrangian on the lattice to define that theory. So that's a problem here. And this is a statement, of course, you may not know. We don't, yeah. I don't understand what you mean by you cannot put the Lagrangian on the lattice. Oh, oh, no, okay, okay. Let, let, let me say this more clear. Yes, I think you are getting to the point. So the point is, if you try to put a chiral theory on the lattice, then what you will find is that the original chiral theory have a fermion doubler. Oh, the lattice just means discretize uh, space time or space. Here is discrete space. Yes. So for example, if I find a function f of x continuous, I just write the f of x in terms of f of x, and then x plus a, x plus 2a. So that's a discretize. I don't have a value in between. So that's what I mean by lattice. But in field theory, we do continuous. OK. Uh, more questions? Good question. So, uh, so the, the, there are only two questions, and if you have get these two questions actually the, uh, and the, two, the two, two key message later, then I think this will really work well for my talk actually. So the, the two questions is that uh, uh, how do we understand the anomaly uh, in terms of a so-called bulk age correspondence? So let me say something about anomaly first. So anomaly means that uh, uh, if there's a field theory, basically you can have some classical symmetry obeyed by so-called Nolan theory. If there is a so conserved charge, then it's a, uh, uh, if there is a symmetry, then it's a conserved charge. But in a sense, uh, quantum theory basically can can uh, does not may not obey this this case. You have some classical symmetry, but quantum mechanically that symmetry will be broken. So that's so called quantum anomaly. So let's just understand quantum anomaly as the way how this uh, uh, classical symmetry is broken by a quantum fluctuation or quantum defect. So put this way. And bulk age correspondence means that, uh, like what you study for topological insulator, if you have a bulk inside, if you cut this system with a boundary, then there is a correspondent age state, so-called bulk age correspondent. So the correspondent bulk system has a correspondent age state. So I want to understand how the quantum uh, symmetry breaking, broken uh, classical symmetry, relate to the uh, so-called bulk age correspondent. Okay. And I will, I will also ask a question, how to define this chiral theory. And as, as this, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, as you just mentioned, that there is, uh, what's the problem about this? It's, this is actually a long-standing challenge. You can Google so-called fermion doubling problem on uh, Nielsen Enomia theory. He said that uh, any local free chiral fermion cannot put on the lattice with unsigned symmetry. Okay, so that's, that's the statement. So if you try to put a, a, a low energy description about this theory on the lattice, <coughs> you will find out that actually this theory has a fermion doubler. What it means is that uh, if you have a chiral mode moving on the one direction, there's a corresponding anti-chiral mode moving in opposite direction called a doubler. So that problem will cause you, if you want to even simulate any kind of chiral fermion system on the lattice, you cannot down because you always have a doubler. And this is a, a pretty famous question. So, so there are some older approach. I think it's, it will be uh, kind of a, uh, too detailed to go through this detail approach, but I'll just say uh, there's a, the most famous one is Ginsburg-Wilson fermion, and there's a domain wall fermion, and there's overlap fermion, and et cetera. People sp spend really a lot of time, 20 years or something, in latest QCD, and they spend really a lot of money and funding from the government and try to understand this. But even for, for this uh, hardworking people doing this, the understanding is actually uh, limited. Later words fail to demonstrate it will work, uh, especially for the gauge theory. So in a sense, this is still a problem if you talk to any people doing like a lattice uh, high energy theory. And of course, this will also be a problem in condensed matter if you want to consider chiral fermion on the, on the lattice. But now this code just try to correspond to the key question. Uh, these two key questions about the bulk age correspondent and the quantum symmetry breaking as an anomaly, and also how to define this theory non-perturbatively. Okay, then the, the answer for this question of the key message is actually anomaly matching, uh, which means that the way how the quantum symmetry breaking can totally cancel out 
well, related to the concept that uh, the boundary of that space can be fully gapped. <coughs> okay, so this is like uh, some kind of uh, 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 kind of physical statement, but it's a, a bit uh, more abstract. But this is actually what we what we find is a kind of a contribution we have. We find that actually whether this uh, theory has a quantum symmetry breaking or the so-called anomaly, I use some kind of a way to explain this. It's related to whether the edge space can be fully gapped. For example, in the case of, uh, uh, for example, in, in a topological insulator, you cannot get, get uh, you cannot open a mass gap, which means you cannot destroy the edge space if you don't break the symmetry. But in this case, I, I'll talk about what's the condition really make the edge space can be, uh, can open a mass gap. And I also give this uh, latest definition, non perturbative definition of this uh, chiral theory. Okay. And the picture is like this, actually. So as I said, I need to apologize this talk give as a particle physics, but this really have some connection to uh, what you did in a uh, conventional lab. I really try to uh, push this. So the things that people compute about one loop diagram and five loop diagram actually related to a concept you put a quantum node space on the cylinder. The way that to cancel out those uh, this one loop diagram, no contribution as anomaly matching means no quantum symmetry breaking, exactly related to the concept that you can have the edge space gaping out Gap out means open the mass gap, means that you can destroy the edge space, let them not moving by adding some proper uh, interaction terms. So just like thinking about doing this ferro magnetic put on, on the edge, or like uh, using the external magnetic field. Those are the way that you can do to gap out the edge. And it turns out that if we ask that we don't, we, we don't want to break the original symmetry, we still can do that. And that's the case in the in the in the in one side will relate to there is no uh, uh, quantum symmetry breaking or there is no anomaly. Okay, so let me just say again, the so-called this one loop diagram or so-called the quantum symmetry breaking uh, is zero, no contribution. Take this to zero is exactly to the concept that there is no, uh, that you can have no edge space flowing. You can you can have you can make the edge space frozen, but without break the symmetry. And that's not the case for topological insulator because you need to break the P2, uh, time reversal symmetry to break, uh, to, to, to uh, open the mass gap, to make the edge state non-moving. And I'll define this theory uh, from the concept of a topological order insulator. Okay, so uh, I, I think that this part will be more appreciable about this when I go to a so-called quantum node physics and anomaly. Okay, so this, this won't be easy, but uh, let me just try to help you. Um, so the idea is that uh, there's uh, people in uh, 1962, like Schrodinger, famous people uh, like the pair with uh, Feynman, they compute a so-called one plus one D example in QED. If you compute this diagram, they will tell you about how the uh, current of this uh, uh, one plus one D system will flow. You can just think about the edge space of one plus one D. You can compute the current, how this current can be flow. It turns out that there is so-called a vector current the vector current add up the contribution about left moving and right moving modes. And there is also a current which is so-called the actual vector current, which actually is the left moving mode minus right moving modes. And the situation is actually profound. Usually the current is conserved. In the sense, this is true for vector current, okay? So the vector current is just the left moving mode and right moving mode, and together <coughs> conserved. But it turns out the left moving mode my, uh, subtract the right moving mode is not conserved in that uh, in that uh, theory. So that's a statement. Okay, so that's a statement in particle physics. And if you have interest, uh, you can go to this uh, 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 stand-up book uh, in quantum field theory, Peskin and Schroeder. But this is fine. I, we, we, we might not care about particle physics. We want to care about condensed matter. So let me say something about condensed matter. How, how do we understand this? So there is a quantum hole, fractional quantum hole space, which are actually topological order space in 1985 and 1990.